Japan, with some snow flurries edging into the west and places like Hokkaido stretching down to Honshu. On, on Thursday, we see that wind pick up, knocking temperature down for Mongolia and northeastern areas of China, and bringing yet more snow into Japan. The temperature in Tokyo, however, at 10 degrees Celsius. Now we move to South Asia. Up in the north, it's been exceptionally cold for the likes of Pakistan and India, extending across to Bangladesh. We've also had fog issues causing problems with disruption here for visibility. Stretching down to the south, however, it's a much clearer picture. Some showers still coming into Sri Lanka, but it hasn't dried up relatively well. Some wetter and windy weather, however, moving across the likes of Afghanistan as well as Pakistan. From a disruption, it'll bring some snow to the Himalayas on Thursday. Things will start to warm up for New Delhi. <laughs> stories this hour. Russia escalates its bombardment of the Ukrainian city of Bakhmut. Its forces are trying to secure a rare military victory after months of fighting as Ukrainian city, um, among the four main positions in Vietnam, the Prime Minister and the President are former officials from the Public Security Ministry. A preliminary hearing for a class action against Indonesia's drug regulator, health ministry and several pharmaceutical companies is underway in Indonesia. Nearly 200 children died from acute kidney injury last year after taking tainted cough syrups. Eight agencies have warned that malnutrition among children in Ecuador is spiraling out of control. Almost half of all toddlers younger than two don't get enough to eat. Among indigenous communities, the issue is even more prevalent as Alexander Brown gets your thoughts. Sidney Chimbolema's entire life has been one of subsistence. One of 12 children, she remembers going to bed with an empty stomach. Her husband is employed as a bus assistant, but she says she struggles to feed two-year-old girl. The salary isn't enough for even one person. We spend the $200 he makes on food and necessities for my son. No clothes or anything else. Sylvia's story is a familiar one among indigenous families living high up in the Andes region of Chimborazo. Most make less than half the national minimum wage of $480 a month. Ecuador suffers from chronic levels of malnutrition among children. Indigenous communities in remote areas are especially vulnerable. Charities say the COVID-19 pandemic and soaring inflation have worsened the situation. Four out of every ten children under the age of two suffer from chronic malnutrition. And with it come growth issues and learning issues. This problem is much worse in rural areas, and we believe the 